Welcome back to the Golf A Lot YouTube channel. Today we are here in sunny Manchester at Stockport Golf Club and I've got a really exciting video here for you guys. Today we're going to be putting my number one ranked driver of 2024, the Ping G430 10K Max, up against the Benross Delta XT. Now you might be thinking, why are we putting these two drivers head to head against each other? And the reason for that is because the price difference between these is honestly pretty mental. We've got the Ping driver coming in with an RRP of £599 and the Benross is only £229. So with the Benross driver being almost a third of the price of the Ping, I want to see are we really getting three times the value with this Ping driver. Now I have already reviewed this driver on an earlier video over on our YouTube channel. So if you want to know a little bit more on my thoughts on the looks, the technology, how this driver performed, you can go and check that out. But it was my number one ranked driver of 2024 so far. But let's start off by taking a bit of a deep dive into the Benross driver and see what we've got to work with today. So first impressions with this driver. At the minute, I really like how it looks. You've got this black and red theme going on, obviously with the red shaft here. All just looks like quite a nice complete package and I think the head cover is a really smart design as well. Taking a look at the club head, we can see on the base here that design is still there so you've got this really nice cohesiveness which I'm a massive fan of. Now there is quite a lot going on here, there's a lot of these little details but I do like how they've managed to keep that colour scheme which makes it seem not too overwhelming however I would still say there's quite a lot going on here. We've also got these quite clear grooves on the face that are highlighted in white. So if you like having that alignment aid on your driver face, that could be really good for you. It kind of has like a ping feel to it in the sense that you've got this matte head with the turbulators. They're not quite the same as the ping turbulators that you'd normally see, but there's definitely the same sort of vibe going on there. I wouldn't say it looks like a ping driver at a dress, but I can see some similarities there. There is a little bit of a weird pattern going on with those kind of turbulator things on the top of it, a big gap here. But again, that's supposed to help golfers act as a little bit of an alignment aid to help you square up to the ball. It's not necessarily what I would go for if I was designing a driver, but there's nothing standing out that I really, really dislike. It does just look a little bit cheaper in the sense that some of those finishing touches and the designs that I'm seeing on there aren't necessarily giving that premium feel that we've seen with some of the other drivers. But as far as a 230 pound driver goes, I think the design here is pretty good. So coming on to a little bit of the technology within this driver, we've got a newly designed Aero Crown, which is essentially what we were saying earlier that looks a little bit like we've seen before on ping drivers with the turbulators. We have seen this in other drivers before. It's essentially just there to help reduce a little bit of the drag, give you better aerodynamics, and essentially just help you to swing the club head a little bit faster. We've also got an added speed slot and fast face technology, both of which are actually pointed out on the design of this so that you can see that. Again, that is just help you get some faster ball speeds going. And that face is made of titanium, so I'm not sure how that is gonna sound when we actually go to strike the ball. This is also an adjustable driver. So we've got this sliding weight track here so that you can favor it towards a draw or a fade. We've also got an adjustable hosel here too, which I would say is pretty impressive for a 230 pound driver to have that adjustability within there. All right, so we're here at Stockport Golf Club. You guys know the drill when it comes to testing out the equipment. We're gonna take the Ben Ross driver and hit some shots with it out here on the course, putting it head to head with the ping driver. Then we're gonna take them both indoors over to Hook to get the data to talk through it all with you guys. But let's get started. I'm very excited to test this driver out. Not the strongest start, and that was a very interesting sound that is incredibly tinny off the face, but let's hit a few more. Ooh, that was nice. <laughs> One straight down the middle, two out to the right a little bit. Doesn't seem to be much forgiveness on those two shots that went out to the right. It'll be interesting to see with the ping driver if we're feeling a little bit of difference there. But I tell you what, that one shot that went right down the center that was really, really good. And I'll be interested to see what the difference is there in the distance with what we can get with the ping. They'll be good to compare for the distance. Interestingly enough, that felt like the type of strike that was going off to the right with the Ben Ross one. So definitely a difference there, even just from those first shots in terms of forgiveness. We hit one more with the ping driver. 
I wasn't sure which one was going to win there with those two drives that went down the middle, but this one here is the Ben Ross ball. This one, maybe about eight, nine yards up, is the ping driver. So just some initial thoughts from that first hole. It was interesting that the Ben Ross driver was able to almost live up to the ping with the well-struck one. However, as you saw, it was very easy to lose the ball out to the right. I don't think we're getting as much forgiveness here, which to be honest, you would expect with the price difference between this and the ping driver. But we're gonna hit a few more, see how we get on, see if I can stop losing them to the right. Just very little leeway with like a slightly off strike. There's not much there to help you out. Obviously, you guys can hear the sound that this driver is making. It's very loud, it's very tinny. To be honest, I feel like it just sounds awful. Luckily, the strike and the feel, it doesn't feel as bad as the driver sounds. However, if you're a massive sound player with your driver, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a big off-putting factor. All right, back onto the ping driver now. See, that's the shot. That's why this one won best driver of 2024. So of the ones that ended up on the fairway, we have got an interesting mix here. The shortest one here is a Ben Ross one. However, the longest one there is also the Ben Ross one. The two in the middle were with the ping drivers. And what I found that was quite interesting was that the shots that went offline, I have one that went into the semi over on the left hand side and a couple that fell off over to the right, one with the ping and one with the Ben Ross. The difference was the one with the ping that went down to the right was still in line with these two here. So very consistent for distance, even with that off strike. Whereas the two that went either side with the Ben Ross driver were about 50 yards further back from that miss hit. So very, very different there in terms of forgiveness and how far the ball is gonna go when you do miss strike it. Let's head inside and get over to hooks and get some data to look into exactly how these two drivers are performing. All right, so we're back now at Golf Lot HQ. We're gonna go through the foresight report to see what was going on between these two drivers. Now, looking at the data here, I was impressed with a few things with the Ben Ross driver that I definitely was not expecting to see on this report. So starting off with the ball speeds. Now, the type of ball speed that I'm looking for is around 133. That is my average. That was what I was getting with the Ping G430 10K Max. However, the Ben Ross driver was all the way up at 135 on average, with some shots going as fast as 137.6. So definitely some scope there to get some really fast ball speeds, which I was really impressed with. And this did also seem to then go into some added distance with the Ben Ross driver, which very surprisingly actually went further on average than the ping driver. Now the carries, I was seeing an extra five yards on average with the carry for the Ben Ross driver and even more of a difference in the totals. Now anything in the 250 plus range is a very strong distance for me. And what I was really surprised at was with the Ben Ross driver, there were four shots that went 260 yards, which is massive distance for me. That's not what I would ever expect to see with my own driver. So I was really, really impressed with that. The only thing I would say is that that was counteracted by a few shots that were going less than the average that I was seeing with the Ping G430 and the consistency there in terms of how far it's going. There was a lot more variation with the Ben Ross than the Ping driver, which is probably what we'd expect given how forgiving we know the Ping driver is. Spin rates were very similar. The ping was just ever so slightly higher than the Ben Ross driver. However, the launch angles and peak heights were almost identical. So very similar ball flights going out there. However, we did see that the data then from hooks was backing out what I was thinking out on the golf course, which is just that you can definitely get a really long, strong shot going with the Ben Ross driver. We saw out there earlier that the longest shot I hit was with the Ben Ross, not the ping driver. 
However, the consistency just isn't there. Okay, so as a bit of a conclusion, this isn't gonna be a simple, you know, which one is better? We know which one's better and we could have predicted that at the start of the video. The Ping came out as number one for my favorite driver in 2024 because it performed incredibly well in every single area. And to be honest, I couldn't really fault it on anything other than the fact that they used lime green detailing and I just don't like that. With the Ben Ross driver, it was coming in at such a low price point that we knew there were gonna be some areas that just weren't going to be able to live up to the Ping driver unless it was a complete miracle. The issues that you're gonna see with this driver are the sound is pretty horrendous. It just sounds like a tin can, it's really loud. You just don't want to be playing a driver with that sound, or I assume you don't. I don't think most people would want to play a driver that makes that sound. The other issues that you're going to see is that level of consistency in terms of forgiveness. If you're hitting it offline, you're going to lose a lot of distance there. And if you miss strike it, the chances are the ball is going to go offline. It's not going to be having that forgiveness to fight it and bring it back like you see in some of these forgiving drivers. So if that level of forgiveness is really important to you, you honestly might be better off going for a second-hand forgiving driver at that lower price point rather than going for this one. However, if all you're looking for is a driver that you know that you can get some really strong distances with, that's adjustable, that you can tailor to your swing, and also comes in at a low price point, I do think this is a really good option. There are obviously just those small caveats that we've mentioned there. Despite already being at such a low price point, what is really impressive with this driver is how premium the shaft and the grip are that you're getting here. You're getting a Lampkin grip and a Fujikura Ventus shaft. So this is a really premium shaft. It's what you'd expect to see in the tailor-made drivers. So a really nice premium touch there, even though the overall price tag for this driver is so low. So I think that's a really impressive element that this driver has. Overall, I do just wanna say I am really impressed with this driver. At a price tag of only 230 pounds, I think it's performed really well. And obviously we've been judging it very harshly because we're putting it up against my number one ranked best driver of 2024. So we always expected it to fall a little bit short, but I think at that price tag, it's really impressive the results I was seeing from this driver. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments if you've ever tried out one of these drivers or if you might be looking to try one out after this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop us a like. And if you wanna know more on my thoughts, you can check out my full written reviews for both of these drivers over on the Golf Lot website. Thank you guys for watching and subscribe for more.